Freeze Rider Lookout is the card of the day and really the talk of the town over the past couple of weeks. This is inspired by Aspiring Spikes version. The core concept is you are utilizing crime payoffs like Magda the Horde Master, which is a 2 minute 2 2 that says whenever you commit a crime, you make a tap treasure, only triggers once each turn, and then you can sack three treasures to make a 4 4 flying haste. And then Freeze Rider Lookout, 3 3 reach for three when you be, whenever you commit a crime. Look at the top five cards of your library, put a land from among them onto the battlefield tapped, rest in the bottom, and again, only triggers once each turn, but you can kind of circumvent that by triggering it on your turn and your opponent's turn. Now, the best way to do that is Scrabbling Claws, which is a card that, again, people just don't really realize is legal in Pioneer. But it is very similar to Relic of Progenitus, and Main deck Graveyard Hate, oddly kind of good, like against Phoenix and Amalia, it has some applications, well, it's good against Phoenix and it has some applications against Amalia, but uh, yeah, target player exiles a card from their graveyard, just tap it, you don't have to spend additional mana, and why is that good? Because if you, say, have Scrabbling Claws on turn one, play Magda on turn two, tap the Claws immediately to trigger the Magda on turn two, and then if you, say, he heaven forbid, you curve that into Lookout, and then you tap the claws on turn three and you get the trigger both the lookout and the Magda. So you get a lot of a lot of utility there. Now, it's a little weird because the ver most of the versions that Spike has been playing in modern have Valakut the Molten Pinnacle. And we don't quite have a good enough, like, we don't have a payoff similar to Valakut for putting a bunch of lands into play. But what we do have is good utility lands. So you'll notice the mana base here. We have starting off with four Sunken Citadel which is a card that taps for two mana to only four activated abilities of lands, which we have quite a bit of, actually. So four Field of Ruin, three Volatile Fault. Now, the reason I've chosen to go with Volatile Fault and not Demolition Field, which is an effective, you know, it's effectively more copies of Field of Ruin, is Volatile Fault makes a treasure, and Magda wants you to have three treasures in play. So if you say turn one, a turn one clause, turn two, play the Magda, tap the clause, make one treasure. Turn three, play Volatile Fault, sack the Fault, target your opponent's land, trigger Magda, second treasure, Volatile Fault resolves, third treasure, 4-4 four, four Flying Haste. So there's some cool stuff you can do with Magda and Volatile Fault, and I think it is worth it. Even though you are technically down a land in the exchange, you still get the mana back from the treasure. Uh, past that, we have a couple layer of the Hydras and a couple of that of the Bugbears. Again, more good lands to use the Sunken Citadel with, one Beseju, and then a bunch of basics and dual lands, Stomping Grounds, Forest, and Mountains. Um, past the Scrabbling Claws, we do have some other ways to make to commit crime. So we have four Torch the Tower. I think this is probably the best one mana red, the, what, the best one mana removal spell that this specific version could play. And the reason for that is because we have quite a few stuff to bargain with. Again, Magda makes treasures. If, say, you play Magda and make one treasure and they kill your Magda, you know, you want something to do with that treasure that's lying around because you can't get to make a 4-4. Four -four. You, you, don't, you don't have the Magda in play anymore. So you want ways to utilize that extra treasure. Could just be using it for mana, but also we have ways, again, to use Torch the Tower and then a couple of Shrapnel Blast. This is kind of a weird one. Um, I had this one, I, I had tried a couple of different versions of this, and I, I wanted another big two-mana removal spell, and this is, like, the best thing I could come up with. If you have any other suggestions, please let me know in the comments, uh, because I'm, I'm spending a lot of time with, with Lookout and, and various shells, but Shrapnel Blast is kind of cool, because, again, you have some other, you have a bunch of random artifacts, like Torx, uh, excuse me, Magda making treasures, the extra treasure off Volatile Fault. Again, if your Magda dies, you want to make sure you can utilize that treasure, or if you just don't draw Magda. Um, Tireless Tracker, that's a card we haven't gotten to yet, but generates artifacts for Shrapnel Blast. And one thing I will notice, or I will say about this specific version, the first version I have didn't play Tireless Tracker. Uh, the second one did, and every other version is going to have four of this card because, oh my goodness, it is incredible when you get to start going off with Tireless Tracker and Free Strider Lookout because Lookout just puts lands into play, which triggers the, the Tireless Tracker, so it just, like, gives you infinite card advantage, and it's really, really sick in a lot of those, like, those grindy matchups. Bonecrusher Giant, another way to commit crimes. Fable the Mirror Breaker. We're playing a red deck. We're going to play Fable. I don't need to explain that. And then at the very, very tippity top of the curve, a couple of World Souls Rage. So you kind of want some sort of top-end payoff for having a bunch of extra lands in play. 
What's nice about Rage is it's somewhat flexible and versatile, like you can target their planeswalker, you can target them, you can kill a creature with it, it commits a crime, and you have a lot of lands that go to the graveyard, right? Field of Ruin, uh, I guess the one beside you, and then the Volatile Faults. Eight lands that go to the graveyard naturally, so you can get a couple of those back off Rage, so you get some extra value there too, which is kind of cool. Um, that is pretty much it for the main deck. Uh, as far as the sideboard is concerned, Rampaging Ferocidon, good against the Malia. You don't want them to gain life. Rending Volley, good against plenty of things. Mono White, uh, Amalia, good against, what was I going to say? Ledger Shredder. There's a number of different decks that this is good against. Red Cap Melee, good against the red decks. Pick Your Poison, good against Vampires, Phoenix, etc., etc. For the grindy matchups and another way to commit crimes without having to spend extra mana which is, you know, again, a very important part about making Free Strider and Magda good because you want ways to commit crimes where you don't have to spend extra mana. You can just kind of curve out naturally with it. Hearse for Phoenix, Dampic Sphere for Lotus, Gigantha for Moral Support, and then the Roxanne Starfall Savant. I don't exactly know if this card is actually good, but I've, I've seen some people casting it and it seemed okay in theory where it's a card that you can ramp into the meteorites commit crimes, and it's a way to give you more mana for World Souls Rage. I was kind of envisioning a version of this deck that just played two to three, maybe even four copies of Roxanne and three to four World Souls Rage, and your whole goal was just ramp as hard as possible and rage them for a million because the meteorites off of Roxanne tap for two. So maybe there's a bigger mana version of this deck that tries to go super over the top. Don't know if you can really do that in Pioneer, though, so maybe that's a version that I'll try at some point later, but this is kind of more of the uh, the starting point, as it were. But that is pretty much it for the intro, so I hope you guys are ready to commit some crimes, and I will see you back here in just a little bit for round number one. But when MH3 comes out, it's going to be nice because we won't have access to the cards immediately, but because the because the God account will we'll have access to the cards. So it'll be good for into the new set releases. But I don't really anticipate me using the account outside of new set releases. There's not really a lot of other reason for it. All right, I'm going to keep and simply draw a third land, I believe. Maybe I shouldn't keep this hand, but... I believe... <laughs> hmm. Shrapnel Blast, huh? Shrapnel Blast, huh? We do have artifacts for the blast, at least. Provisioner is nice if we had access to it. It could have been a treasure vault. Well, no, I cut. Didn't I cut a Shrapnel Blast for a roast? So let's let's pretend that the roast is the Shrapnel Blast, right? Because that because I cut the third Shrapnel Blast for one roast. So if we draw the roast, that could be a land. All right, land me. Land me, please. Yeah, I'll take a draw step. The Bone Crusher Giant Artifact. Legion Extruder. Could be interesting. Extruder could be nice. You don't remember what Scrabbling Claws does? Oh, we can't... Oh, wait, I should have cycled the second one. Right. <laughs> Instead of using it, I should have cycled the second one. I don't know why I didn't do that. Uh, I'm dumb. Nizen, thank you for the four-month resub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should, I should have cycled the OT. That was my bad. I mean, I wanted to get greedy and save the claws for the so I could double claws on the lookout turn, but obviously that was too greedy if I'm missing land drops. Go to four. I just don't think I have outs here. Even if I draw land... <laughs> Alright, you win. <laughs> you win. I have died. Alright, mono red. Uh Clothis and Red Cap Melee. These rages are probably too slow. Mm, could pick your poison against Slick Shot and Kumano. Play one pick your poison over the hearse. I feel like you would cut Shrapnel Blast. I kind of just want more removal though. We have enough ways to turn it on. It's like it's a good turn for a play. I don't want to cut removal in this matchup though. It's not going upstairs. It's just I needed to kill their stuff. And with the important thing, this hand's good by the way. 
The important thing about Shrapnel Blast in this matchup is if they have Kumano, they get a counter on their second creature, and a lot of my removal is Shock, right? I have Bone Crusher Giant and Torch, so I kind of need something else to be able to kill something that has a counter on it from Kumano, or uh, Monstrous Rage too. That thing is dead. 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 Kill it. Kill it. Dead. Dead, 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 dead. 16, three drops, and no elves. Yeah, I just don't... I don't know how you make room for elves in this deck, though. Like, I don't know what you want to cut for elves. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Although, weirdly enough, I think it was correct to play the fault that turn. Yeah, because now I can't actually go track her into removal spell. I should have played fault. Never punished. Why would I ever get punished? I'm just going to kill it. Ah, am I going to kill it now? They could have the Monstrous Rage. I'm just going to kill it now. Whatever, it's fine. And we can just use these to kill them. Because they're missing land drops. We'll be fine. We're fine. I mean, our tracker is dead, but that doesn't matter that much. What's up, Bobsy? Our tracker is actually not dead. Mm, should I fault now? I feel like I shouldn't fault now. I'm doing I. I'm going to pop a clue now. And then if they respond with shock, I can pop a second clue. I think if they don't respond, I'm just going to cast Bone Crusher. Yeah, I think this is fine. I guess I could play around them having like one drop wizard plus wizards lightning on this, but I just don't care that much, you know? Really just don't care that much. <laughs> they just ignored the tireless jacker. What a Chad. What an absolute Chad. That's a bold move, God, and let's see how it pays off for you. I'll play another tireless tracker. Should not attack the Citadel, by the way, but it's fine. What is this? Witch Stalker Frenzy. Okay, so we respond to this. Get two more clues, then pop one of them. I guess I'll pop now. Kind of doesn't matter that much. Go to eight. Yeah, upstairs, by the way. Tireless Tracker? No, I don't care about that card. I deal two to you. I deal two to you. They're going to double play with Fire It? Okay. See, personally, I would rather concede than do that. But, you know, to each their own. Well, I mean, they are dead on board, so. <laughs> All right, game three. Turns out... Uh, if your moderate red opponent gets mana screwed, magic is pretty easy. Let's do that again. If I've ever watched a Doomwake stream, I know one thing is certain. He can and will tap Citadel for anything but two mana to activate land abilities. So true. So true, Master. I personally, I just don't know what my card does. You can't, you can't expect me to know what my cards do. I do write it from time to time. On occasion, I write it. This hand's nice, by the way. Like, really nice. Scrabbling Claws, Pioneer Staple. Get your copies now. I mean, it's an uncommon, so you, you have no excuse. Humano. It's probably going to be a melee turn. Yeah, the next turn I can go... I can go melee on one, tap land Claws on two, then Magda on three. Because if I go Claws into Magda, I'm guaranteeing that I'm not killing their first creature, and I really don't want to do that. I want to kill the Swiss Beer. Get it out of here. Get it the F out of here. Ooh. Hmm. Does that change my play? Not really. Although it does make the Citadel kind of awkward, because I was going to play the Citadel this turn. I'm trying to think of what the best sequence is. I could gamble. Could do a bit of gambling and just cast the Magda this turn. And then next turn go Volatile Fault, Claws. Claws them on main phase, and then Fault them on their turn. But it's not even a guarantee that I can Fault them, because they didn't play a second land. And most of their deck is basic mountains, you know? Like, that's the issue. That line is kind of greedy if they just draw a second mountain, you know? It would be three treasures, but I think it's a bit too greedy. I think I'm not going to take that line. I'm just going to go Claws plus Citadel? No, I can at least represent a removal spell with this. Not that they're going to play around it. They 100% have laid up a stage two, because they wouldn't keep a one-land hand without stage. Touche. Touche. 
Ooh, well, that's probably a little bit better, right? Is that one they can't even really kill? Like, they have a lot of shocks, but it's not clear they can kill a 3 3. Alright, this game's probably over. We did it! The Volatile Fault, not online. Uh, I guess I'll take a Citadel. I don't need two dens, do I? I mean, I don't need two Citadels either. I guess I guess I'll just take the den. Not sure that it matters. So now we go here, here, here. Uh, probably still no attacks. I'm just chill. We'll eventually clip close this game out. I just There's no reason to attack now. They could probably just double block the lookout anyways. If they attack, do I block? Probably. Trade the lookout for the etching. I think they have monstrous rage. Yeah, I don't really need the lookout, do I? I guess I can see... We can do this first. See if we hit up the lookout. Just in case that changes our block. But I don't think it will. Yeah, I'll just trade lookout, I think. Could also just take it. But I kind of want to make them use the mana on the uh, the Monstrous Rage. We have enough stuff in play to win this game that we just don't need to look out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Not much of a game going on here. Eventually, they'll find a non-basic land. At some point this game, they, I promise you they will. I just want to sack my fault so I can make a Mogda token. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Animate this. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just put them on a two-turn clock, right? Send with everything. Token pop clue. And this is ten damage. We can post combat play Citadel. Citadel. All right, your turn. You may proceed. All right, so uh, what I've learned from this match is that when your mono-red opponent gets meta screwed, your deck is extremely good. Write that one down, by the way. That is that is free information that you get on twitch.tv slash doomwake. And by free, I mean that'll cost you $5 a month for the rest of your life. Todd, thank you very much for the raid. Greatly appreciate that. We are doing a little bit of cooking today with uh, some gruel crimes in Pioneer. We're trying to utilize Magda and Free Strider Lookout to uh, to their to their best potential. It's going it's going okay so far. It's not going super bad. It feels like there is something with this shell. We're not quite there yet, but we are we're, we're very close. Red Splash Bronco. That sounds like fun. Curve is low enough too. The curve is super low in the red deck, so. Right, let me just clean up this game real quick. Boop. I make I animate den. Play my land first. All right, cool. Edge. All right, one and zero. Defeated our skillfully defeated our mana screwed mono red opponent. Roxane is for the grindy matchups. I just couldn't find a I couldn't find a better card for that slot J rumming. Seemed like a, a fine card to be able to bring in against the like when you need to get grindy. It's not super effective, but I don't know. Yeah, it's a five drop for the grindy matchups. It is nice that we have all this main deck graveyard hate against Phoenix. We haven't played against Phoenix. Oh, speaking of, have we located the Phoenix gamer? I'm trying to think if there's any reason to wait on the Magda. Probably not, right? Because, like, I'm never going to be in a position where I can actually get two crimes out of it, or two treasures. Because even if I go Magda, hold up, fault, it they're just going to kill it end step. Like, I'm not going to get two things out of it, you know? So I might as well just do it now. I know it's going to die, but that's also fine. That is a good point. Phoenix doesn't usually have basic mountain, and we got a lot of Field of Ruins. So we might just be able to cut them off red. Their mana base is usually three basic islands. Also nice to, that they have Lightning Axe and not just the Shock, because we actually get a card out of the graveyard with Claws. I'm just going to start faulting them. They have Shredder, we have the Treasure to Sack to it, to, to Torch it. Start faulting them now. 
I don't know. Let's just chill for a little bit. Let's do a little chilling. Maybe cast the Bone Crusher. Let consider resolve. Brashko, thank you for the six months. Nausea's got a deck tech for us. What do you got for me, Nausea? Golgari Crime. See, I actually, I have a Golgari version as well that we're going to maybe try out after this match. Or after this league, rather. Excuse me. Uh, Big Shreds is fine. Respond to Big Shreds. I have to do this now. Sack this. And then... <laughs> <laughs> no, do not want that. But I'll, we'll, do, we'll talk about the deck tech a little bit more in a second. Uh, kind of want to just do this, I think. Make you exile a card from your graveyard. Just give me a second here. I'm going to hold up the Scrabbling Claws in case they go for Phoenix. I might want to pop the Claws. But I think that's a good starting point. I definitely like playing... Uh, I for sure like playing... The, uh, the Zealots. I think you really want to do... I do think you want to play the Zealots. You just need more vampires. I'm getting cruised. Exile this. Roast not particularly good against a Phoenix. <laughs> Free deck tech if I waited. Yeah. <laughs> Magda, huh? I'm not feeling super great about this game. Okay, we can cast Magda. And go Stomping Ground, Main Phase, this. Surely they don't have another removal spell in their hand. Oh, they don't have a basic mountain, so. We are at least going to get another treasure off of this. I guess the issue is we have to sacrifice the treasure to be able to use this vault. Which means we're still only going to have two treasures. So that's kind of awkward. Could have, well, could have also just faulted main phase and not got the extra treasure to get them less red mana. Draw two, discard two, not killing Magda. Can you pronounce the name drumming? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, drumming, right? Oh, when I'm saying your name, am I saying J Rumming? <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll say drumming then. Okay, we're pranking. Did they just not have a removal spell? Are they going to let us cook? Yeah, of course not. All right, might as well do this now. It's the same thing either way. I'm sacrificing a treasure and getting a treasure. But I kind of want it in the graveyard so I can rage them back. Although I don't know if I'm going to cast rage this turn. Oh, right, I'm dumb. Right, 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 all right. I forgot, I forgot that the vault, the vault was going to give me two treasures because it gets one off of this and one off of this. But unfortunately, this is only sorcery speed, so I couldn't do that main phase. Uh, three cards in hand. I'm just going to cast this, I guess. Do not feel like we're at a great spot this game. All right, we have a song request from Jesse. It's on SoundCloud, so we're going to have to pause Spotify for a sec. Is the volume on SoundCloud? I don't know. Hope it's not too loud. <laughs> uh, It's not, but I can put it on there if you give me one second here. OTJ Pioneer, new deck. I will take one. Put Shelly in a Gitrog. Yeah, I don't know if I like the Gitrog that much. All right, this game's over. We did. Surprisingly enough, I, I, I don't know how this is possible, but we were playing a deck with four main deck Scrabbling Claws, and I think our Phoenix matchup is actually bad. <laughs> I'm not really sure how that happened, but... I think it's uh it's not great. Alright, I'm gonna think I'm gonna cut the shrapnel blast against them. I want the clothes. Wait, did I cut a fable? Where's my fourth fable? Oh, okay. <laughs> like, wait, what? Did I just register I sign up for a league with three fables? I lost my shit for a second. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Please tell me I did not do that. Please, for the love of God, tell me I did not register three fables. Alright, pip me. And volley me. I have to play one of these cards. I could play one Shrapnel Blast. Yeah, I just wanted more vampires. I wanted more stuff to do with Soren, you know? And and Preacher is nice, especially because it makes tokens. Which then you can use the tokens to sacrifice to Soren. So I kinda wanted to try Preacher. Yeah, I know Torch Exiles. I guess it's like okay against Phoenix. It's not the worst. Alright, play first. Torch is okay, but again, it's only specifically good against Phoenix, and you have so much graveyard hate that you shouldn't be worried about Phoenix anyways. 
At least I think so. Like, if your whole goal is to just slam a bunch of hearses and scrappling claws and, and make it so they can't get Phoenix back, what's the point of playing Torch? It's kind of where I'm at. Torch the opener. And on four, Investigator Felbeek in the shell. Yeah. And, I like, I wanted Preacher, but then my big issue with Preacher is that you had a lot of threes. Because you were playing the Free Striders and the Sorens and the Caravex and all like all the, the crime payoffs. So the reason I didn't want to play Preacher at first is because it was too many threes, but it still might be worth playing. But I think I like all the other numbers in this list. Everything else I think I'm sold on. All right, stomp you. I would like you to take two damage, please. Please take two. All right, Mitch, I got your song request. Three lookouts. All right, don't pierce me. Please don't pierce me. I guess I could have just played a lookout to play around Pierce, huh? Maybe that was better. It's true. Damage not able to be prevented. Main deck Scrabbling Claws. It's not necessarily... Like, the thing about the main deck Scrabbling Claws is it has nothing to do with the, the fact that... I mean, it kind of does, right? Like, Phoenix is the best deck. But that's not why we are playing Scrabbling Claws. It's just a free way to trigger crimes for Lookout in Magda. And I believe, to the best of my knowledge, I think it is the only card in Pioneer that costs one mana, remains on the battlefield, and gives you consistent crime committing every turn. I think it's the only one, because we don't have Relic. Alright, I really want to find a land here, so I can go look at plus Torch. Please give me a land. Please give me a land. Okay, I'm going to discard... I'm just carding double Lookout here, or Lookout Claws. It might just be Lookout Claws, because I think it's pretty likely they have a removal spell for the first Lookout, so I at least want to keep the second Lookout, you know what I mean? Okay, we did draw the land, which is good. The hearse is nice, too. The hearse is really nice. Mm. I already have Field and Fault. I don't really think I need this. I just want more colored mana. Yeah, the hearse is a huge hit, too, because now we get to go Lookout Hearse. Or purse first, then lookout. Imagine, imagine for a second they don't kill this lookout this turn. Then we get to cook. But realistically, the lookout's probably going to die this turn. But that's fine. We still just get to go hearse lookout next turn. Dead. Dead, dead, dead. Button make it cat. Thank you for the follow. Folks, if you are new to the stream, do me a huge favor. If you are not already following the stream... Do me a big, big favor, and would you go ahead and hit that follow button for me? I would greatly, greatly appreciate that. We are making a push to uh, 30,000 followers by the end of the year is our stretch goal. Don't know if we're necessarily going to quite get there, but I think I think we can do it. I think we can do it. Here's the question. Do I hearse now? Cut them off cruise? Or is it better to wait? Uh, don't care about that. That's fine. That I am okay with. If we already follow, we should unfollow. No, don't unfollow. Don't unfollow. Against the rules. I'm going to wait on the hearse. Because they're going to be able to cruise either way, right? I guess if I exile two, the cruise costs five. But I, I kind of would rather wait to see if I can get a... Uh... <laughs> oh, Jago and Gabby, thank you for the unfollow and refollows. That was not the instructions, though. That was not the instructions. All right, well, Hearse not very good against that card, huh? So we need to find a volley. Need a volley, please. I might actually upkeep Fault, so I can thin my deck of a land to make it more likely I can find a... Uh, thin my deck of two lands, actually. Make it more likely to draw a, run a running volley. <laughs> oh, it's a new account. I didn't know that, Kevy. Gotcha. All right, give me a Rending Volley. Not quite. Not quite Rending Volley. We may be in the business of chump blocking this turn. I'm just going to hold up Field Citadel. Making the Lookout. Trigger Lookout again next turn. Yeah, I think we're gonna, probably going to have to chump block with this Lookout. A very high likely would be the chump block with the Lookout. Putting non-volley non cards in the bottom was better odds. Oh, because we already had cards in the bottom instead of shuffling. Yeah, I guess that's fair. That is a good point. Okay, that's not good. We are playing four tireless trackers, right? Just haven't drawn one of those. All right, well, now I think I'm probably going to just take eight. 
Man, maybe I should chump block while I still can. I don't know. Tough spot. We got to do the thing, but it's not clear the thing was actually that good. Uh, can I make a big enough layer to force them to trade? Can I donate for a deck tech only? Yeah, deck techs are two gifted subs or $10. I'm going to get a Citadel here. Do this. I can force them to trade, can't I? Actually, wait, if we draw a volley, they're dead. Right? I think if they if we draw a volley, they're just dead. S9 Frost coming in with the two gifted subs. Thank you very much. Trying to think here. Let's make an 11 11. I'm debating if that's better than faulting them. I, can I do both? If I fault them, I get a treasure, right? Then I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Did I did I math right? So let's assume this is gone, and I have one more treasure. So that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10. Then I attack with 10, 10, 4, 3. They either chump here or trade here. I'm just a I think it's right to cut them off more red, because it's the same thing either way, right? Like, it doesn't really change my math that much. I'm going to second layer here. If I had one more field, this would be perfect, because then I could cut them off all red. That would be kind of nice. But I'm a little bit short of cutting them off enough red, because now we're just dead to a removal spell. We can force a trade. Well, force a trade or a chump block, right? Because they can't trade for the lair. They only have eight. But I can't attack with the lookout, because I need to look out the chump block. Crew. Um, I actually think... I'd maybe rather trade. Yeah, I could have crewed the hearse with the bone crusher. Yeah, oh, frost. Mm. This is a deck tech for a leak, isn't it? I should have told you. <laughs> uh, we don't do deck techs for leaks on the channel now. I feel bad. We'd actually have like a, a, it would be a respectable removal spell at that point, as opposed to just being a two mana shock. Like, it's just a worse Bone Crusher Giant. This hand's a bit dicey. Yeah, we're going to keep this. Um, okay, okay, I can work with this. This is a hand that I can work with. Well, mono red action. Oh, Boros can invoke. Uh, it appears that I have located an issue. Uh, we do not have any sweepers in our sideboard. That is uh, a problem. It's definitely a problem. I think we're in danger, folks. I think we are in danger. Got scrabbling claws, though. Definitely got a scrabbling claws. Yeah, we're just we're so dead this game. Well, uh, we have located the one remaining Convoke player. Unfortunately, we were not prepared for them. Yeah, I guess we'll do this, because this card kills Knight. And run it back? I don't know. Nah, Ferocidon's too... I don't know. I don't think it's that good. The problem with Ferocidon against Convoke is by the time you cast it, they already have five shitters in play, and they just don't have to play more stuff, you know? Like, it's just... It's only good if you're also playing Wraths. Like, if that's your Wrath follow-up, then it's pretty good. I'll draw a colored land. I'm just going to draw a colored land. It's fine. I will simply draw a colored land. That's my fault. But that's the Coward's Play. Faulting is the Coward's Play. I mean, if I have to fault to cast Volley, I'm just losing the game anyways, you know? Like, <laughs> sack my land... And then just sack my land to kill their warden. Like, I'm just not winning the game. So I might as well just try to high roll it. Can we cycle claw? No, you can only cycle claw if there's a target in the graveyard. <laughs> so even if you're beta screwed, you can't even cycle this. I, that's, I find that pretty funny. I guess that's what it's designed around. All right. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Whatever. This matchup is unwinnable. There's no point in playing it anyways. I could, I could, I could beat that deck if I wanted to. If I just sideboarded, you know. What's the one mana card called? End the festivities. Like you just board two to three end the festivities and you win. But 
I have chosen to not do that, and that's fine. Sometimes you're just going to play a bad matchup. Who was here for the Lantern 5-0 League? Type 1 in the chat if you were here. I remember it. That was my last 5-0. Yeah, uh, September of 2022. Look, it's been a while, okay? I'm in the kitchen, all right? When you're in the kitchen, you don't get 5-0s. That's how this works. It's the trade-off. Why was I playing that deck? Because it was a donation deck. Somebody paid me to play it, which was the whole point of me saying I would never, you could not pay me enough money to play this deck. That was the joke. But it was like, it was one of those like, you know, not everybody got the joke, so it wasn't actually that good of a joke. All right, I'm not going to lie. These shrapnel blasts are not it. They are definitely not it. As a matter of fact, I have not, and I'm checking my email right now to see if they have sent me anything, and it appears they have not. What's up, Clockwork? We're having uh, we're having a rough go of it today. <laughs> we are we are having a rough go of it today. I guess holding up removal doesn't even do anything because they have this anyways. Surely my opponent would not kill me on turn three, right? That would never happen because we're playing a format where people don't die on turn three. That's cool. Mm. There's nothing more that I love than not playing the third turn. It's great. Perhaps it is not, and maybe we just have to live with it. All right, red, go Lens of Clarity, donate, free Shredder, Lookout, Codex Shredder. <laughs> Plus some way to not die to a three-power creature. What the fuck? I don't even know what, what you just said. I don't, I don't know the words that just came out of your mouth. Go. We're playing questionable decks. Yeah, but, like, what do you want me to do? You want me to just play Amalia? I got to try something different. I'm doing I'm doing the best I can, all right? I'm doing I'm doing the best I can. I'm trying. I'm trying. At least somebody is trying. I cast Fable of the Mirror Breaker. It is your turn. It seems like the only games that are winnable is when we drop Fable. <laughs> <laughs> Which, to be fair, is maybe not a bad thing, you know. Okay, now we're cooking. Now we are cooking with gas. I don't think I can die if I do it this way. Maybe there's a way I can die, but I don't know. Whatever. Kind of sucks that I discarded both lands and then drew the tracker. I just really despise this Amalia deck. Kind of unfortunate that they didn't do anything about it on Monday. Collected company. Shitty thing about letting this resolve is... If they have Court of Calling in hand and hit exactly Walker Amalia, I have died. The only way to prevent that is Torch the Innkeeper. I should, given that my hand is two volleys, I think doing that is okay. I need Red Mana to play for that card. I think this is fine. I know it looks like a weird play, but I actually, I, I don't mind it. I think it's an okay line. Oh. <laughs> well, it turns out they just had it all. Surely they won't hit Amalia plus Walker, right? Oh. Oh, good deck. Nice deck. <laughs> what a great deck. What an excellent deck that my opponent's playing. You exile a card. I would like you to exile a card from your graveyard, please. Please and thank you. Am I toxic? Would you consider that toxic? Doc. I still have no targets for these volleys, by the way. Uh, now I probably have to pass. I guess we can just pass now. Innkeeper number three? No, you can have that. That's fine, you can have that. I'm okay with that. Ina's kind of annoying as shit. Well, I mean, I don't know. I think that the argument there, Benny, is that this deck kills more kills more consistently on turn three than basically any deck in the format, and I think that's the big issue. 
You know, like, okay, what if what if my argument was that, okay, you can keep Amalia Walker, but ban Prosperous Innkeeper, you know? Like, you can have the Amalia Walker stuff, but, like, just limit the consistency a little bit. Like, is that crazy? Maybe it is. I don't know. They're 19. I don't really want to stomp anything. I'm just going to untap. Could this be worth slots for crimes? I'm not sure I understand the question. All right, get this asshole out of here. Hmm. Didn't expect that to just resolve. I'm just going to go to combat. Attack here, make a treasure, and then pass, I guess? End step, make a tracker. All right, your turn. It always has it has the upside of just killing you from any board state later in the game, too, whereas heroic or prowess. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. The Amalia deck does have quite a bit of resiliency, and I think maybe that's the... It's, it's just like the perfect mix of speed, resiliency, and like, a relatively good plan B, too. Like, this deck doesn't have any flaws, you know? I'm not even convinced it has bad matchups. Do I have to respond to this? No, I think. Deck's mana is hot dog shit. What, the Amalia deck? I mean, my opponent has four dual lands in play. It can't be that bad. They have four dual lands and two treasures that were made off of their combo piece. Like, it doesn't look that bad. If one card lands... Just auto yield to these, right? Can I? Probably. I'm just gonna lose to some random ass creatures. All right, I make a trucker. Where are my fucking lands? I guess we have lookout, so we can go. We can kind of cook this turn a little bit, right? One, two, three. Play lookout again. The issue here is I'm just gonna die to their random creatures. That's the big problem. My volleys don't kill any of these small creatures. I guess I could have bone crushered one of the innkeepers. Maybe I should have done that. So copy lookout. Claws them. I say maybe I should have went to combat first. I'm gonna go to combat first. Because I want to get the treasure off this before I before anything else weird happens. Oh, I should have attacked with this. Forgot. So I have two blockers now. I might just be dead on board. Just took way too much damage from this Dina. Way too much. All right. Well, we get the trigger look out a bunch. That's cool. We get to kind of do the thing. Or stay just a rat out Malia if draws are the biggest issue. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly part of it too, right? It's like the fact that it tournament logistics wise, it does make things kind of awkward in paper. Although I guess in the same vein, I've really, I've actually never seen that come up in paper, so... I've done it a couple times online, but I've yet to see it come up in paper. Battlements could cause crimes on repeat. Oh, because you can target their creature. It's kind of cool. I didn't realize you could target their creature with battlements. That is interesting. You should make the combo stop if there's no cards in library. Yeah, I mean, I would prefer, honestly, that if if the draw happens, then... I don't, I don't know if there's a way to word, to rule this or word it in the proper way, but, like, just have the Amalia player lose if the loop happens. Like, if they have no library. I, again, I don't know if there's a way to say that, because the, the loop technically, like, stop, the loop technically cannot be stopped is the issue. Yeah, they chose not to attack, which I think is good for me. That's an interesting draw. Uh, okay. So, let's think about this. Can go... Go one, two, cast Magda. I think I'm going to copy the Free Strider lookout again. Maybe I should have copied the lookout first. We're going to besiege you, my reflection. I guess we can just copy this. Why didn't I Rending Ball and EOT on their turn? Because I only had treasures. I didn't want to sack a treasure in case I specifically drew Magda, which I did end up drawing. But I just didn't want to give up a treasure. Maybe it was fine. So now we can do it like this. And these will trigger the tracker. Get a den. Okay, no land off that, unfortunately. This make a treasure. And see, now I can I can make a 4-4 with Magda if I want to. And still have double volley up. 
think we should make a 4-4, four, four, right? 1, 2, 3. Let me send in the these three. Leave three blockers back. That makes another treasure. And then we can use the fault on their turn, make a treasure off the mog to get a treasure off the fault, and make another 4-4 four, four next turn. What's the upside of having a Molly in the format? I mean, there are people who enjoy that type of gameplay, and I'm not saying that those people should be left out of the loop. I just, you know, I just question if this is the deck that we want to be giving them, you know? Like, there's there's probably a, a different way to do it that's not this specific deck list, or just the Amalia combo in general. I don't know. There's just a couple of things that I don't like about the, specifically the Amalia combo. Again, the main, my main thing is the draw. I think that unintentional draws in Magic are heinous. That that stuff, there's just no place for that kind of stuff. Like it's it's not part of the game, you know. That is my that is honestly my biggest issue personally with the Molia. Like it just doesn't it feels like we're just playing a different game. If we're in a situation where like, oh, you're gonna kill me, well how about instead of you killing me, we just go play a fifth game, you know? Like that just it seems so weird to me that that's that that's part of it. That's I think that's personally that's my 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 big gripe with the Molia. Everything else, it's like whatever, but the draws aspect of it is just really, really stupid to me. I think we should ban cards I don't like and unban cards I like. True. Honestly, the most base thing that anybody has ever said. Uh, I mean, I guess I keep this. Maybe this hand doesn't have enough action, though. Ooh. Okay, so this wants to be on red anyways. Let's just do this first. <laughs> Bring back Anti. Nah, I'm all set with that. Unban Shaharazad. Also all set with that. I like over... I was trying to fill up my vape tank and I overfilled it. Now it's just everywhere. 07s. Let's go... Here. Amalia plays only one planes. You want me to just start fielding them? I don't know their mana base, but... I guess if they only play one planes, fielding them was pretty good. I didn't know they only had one. Do they have another basic besides the one planes? Dina. Dina's fine. Do they only play one basic? Oh, I didn't know this. Okay. Well, I'll just field them then. I had no idea. Now that I know this, <laughs> now we can go deep. Uh, okay. Well, uh, basic check. Would you like green mana? Would you like green mana, opponent? Ah, well, if I besage you them, they get green mana, so I'm not going to besage you them. So we're on, uh, we're, we're a Ponza deck now. I repeat, we are a Ponza deck. <laughs> we do have a lot of Ponzas, a lot of strip mines now. Oh, don't play a land, don't play a land, don't play a land, don't play a land, don't play a land. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Get out of here. I don't know why I'm, like, unreasonably excited. You may proceed. All right. Well, we can't stone rain them if they don't find a non-basic. Green mana? That's not fair. That's cheating. Green mana is against the rules, opponent. Against the rules. Not allowed. The lookout. The lookout, huh? So we get to go... Mm -hmm. One, two, three. I guess the question is, when do I do it? Probably now, so they can't cord. I think doing it now is fine, because I don't want them to cord. <laughs> I'm not supposed to miss off Magda. How is Volatile Fault then? It's okay. Uh, what's nice about Fault specifically is the treasure that you get is nice with Magda. So it kind of ramps up the treasures a little bit. So giving you more stuff to do with Magda is kind of cool. All right, surely I won't miss off this activation, right? I already have two Sunken Citadels. I kind of just want to dual land. Could have taken Field, but they only have a basic in play. You know what I wish? I wish we still had the um, the Cleansing Wildfires in the deck to just get them off, just get all their lands. Just get them. Just give me all of your lands. Take all of your lands and put them in the trash, please. I love how these crime decks just incidentally destroy graveyard strategies. You would think that, but would it would it would it would it surprise you if I told you that one of our losses this league was to an is it Phoenix strategy? Maybe it wouldn't surprise you. I'm not sure. Maybe it would. That would surprise you. Well, we did in fact lose to Phoenix. Just gonna untap. 
All right, kind of wish I had the uh, kind of wish I had that field of ruin now. Ding ding ding. ding. Besagerum. Well, the thing about Besagerum is they can just get a shock land, right? Just taking it all. Mm. I mean, I find it hard to believe that I can die with Torch, Torch, Bone Crusher in hand. They're gonna cord for one. Okay, what are you getting for one? No, I'm gonna hold the giant in hand. I just want to hold up all the removal. Lunark Veteran. I don't really need to respond here, do I? I think this is fine. Yeah, we can bargain we can bargain both torches, because we can sack the claws. So we can bargain dub we can double bargain the torch and play the bone crusher. Okay, so in response, we can torch the Amalia. No, I stomp the Amalia, right? No, because I want the I want the bone crusher to resolve. So we torch the Amalia. The reason that I'm not stomping first is if they have Tamiyo safekeeping, then I'm going to have to cast another removal spell. And I want to make sure that the Bone Crusher ends up resolving last. Plus, I, I might want to just deal them too. You never know. Yeah, exiling Amalia could be relevant. Uh, do I want to bargain this one? Just for the scry? Kill the walker now? I guess we can bargain kill the walker and then stomp the Amalia. That's probably okay. Yeah, I like that. Why did it not layer? Because it's two bodies. I think the two bodies matter more, but I could be wrong. Because, like, they just have chump blockers for the big layer anyways. Like, if I just get a big layer, they just go chump the layer, chump here, take three. So it still wasn't lethal, even if I get the big layer. But I don't think they have outs now. Um, two, four. Animate this. Concession lag. <laughs> Moto, what are you doing? All right, two and two. We successfully defeated our Amalia opponent after stone running them into the abyss. It's a uh, tough time to be a tough time to be a Rhino token. I'll tell you that much. I know. <laughs> the day that we announced it was like three days after the outburst ban. It was like, oh, come on, why, why me? I mean, I, I'm still like, you know, it's it's obviously amazing to have. It's so sick. Yeah, Living In just won the last uh, the last tournament, last modern tournament, which is the actual last modern tournament of MH3 or before MH3, right? It's the last the last bastion. Did we just jam? So if I field them this turn, it's kind of awkward because I drew these two. Not quite sure what I'm supposed to do. Just jam Magda. What if they have untapped White Source Helix? That's what I'm worried about. Whatever, I'm jamming. They, they never have the Helix here. They will never have the Helix. They never have it here, trust. Am I excited for MH3? A little bit, yeah. I'm excited for things to change. It's going to it's gonna be a huge shakeup. Oh, that's fine. Well, it's kind of awkward because I'm giving them white mana. Well, I mean, they have white mana anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, I guess I cut them off of green. Don't know if it matters that much. Because whatever I cut them off of, they're just going to go get, right? Maybe they give me a target for Torch on their turn. Yeah, we can't cut them off of anything because they have to carry it anyways. They play one of each basic, right? Usually. Yeah, they have one of each basic. Yeah, I doubt they're going to cast Lila, though. They're probably just going to kill my Magda this turn, most likely. Like, I can't imagine a turn where they just don't... That involves them not killing Magda. No attack. What's the point? <laughs> they have an 3 Oh, well, this is interesting. So you know what I can do? I can torch end step just to rage for four. Is that good? It's not getting any better, right? Just use torch as a ramp spell. Kind of have to. I can't I can't let them have the Omnav. Can I have that torch back? <laughs> can I please have that torch back? All right, well, uh, noted. Minus one torch, by the way. I mean, I'm not complaining because we're still killing the Omnav. Do we just make a 4 4 now? Yeah, I think we just make a 4 4. Make a 4 4 hold up fields. Ding, 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 ding. I could draw step the field, but I'm not sure if that's right. I don't know when I should field, is the question. Field at some point. 
Also, by the way, this is the first Magda token that we have made over the course of the past three and a half hours. And it's the first time for everything, folks. Don't let your memes be dreams. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna let them keep the mana confluence. Was this on red? So she get a forest. We got it against the Malia. Did we make a four-four against the Malia? Maybe we did. I can't remember. I don't remember. I'm trying to block that match out of my memory because I don't want to. I want to pretend like we didn't play against Amalia today. Uh, the problem with Mono Green Neo Coops is I just don't think you have enough payoffs for making a bunch of crimes in Mono Green. That's the big issue. We haven't made a ton of Magda tokens, but more so just the treasures have mattered a lot because we're playing Torch the Tower. So even if you're not making a token off, or even if you're not making a 4 4 token off Magda, just giving you treasures to make Torch a better card has come up quite a bit. Do we just layer? One, two... I can shock and layer for three, four, five, six. I can hit them for nine. I could also just rage by holding Vanishing Verse. Guess I would not want to get this first, huh? Let's just attack and rage then. I think I like that. They're probably going to burst the token if they have burst. All right, well, upstairs. Red, green. I'm just going to deal max. Right? Yeah, deal max. Yeah, then we can start stone rate. We can stone rain them a couple of times next turn. Done. All right, good turn. Good turn. Good turn. Nah, these decks don't usually have veto. I think they don't usually play the. Uh, they usually don't play removal spells, or counter spells rather. At least game one, we're playing two rage. The second rage should be a nice draw, and like now they're on six and they have a mana confluence, so it's kind of dicey for them. I think we have enough mana to animate both lands. One, two, three, four. Can animate the layer for two in the den, which is good, right? Can we splash Free Strider in some devotion deck that isn't green? What would that look like? Like, I guess what would be the point of that would be my question. Would you consider the Merfolk that gets your lands back from the graveyard? Um, uh, what card is that? Oh, the two mana two three, the two mana two three that has to attack. No, nah, that card sucks. It also doesn't commit crimes. Bruh. Bruh. Wait, 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 wait. They can have Helix. <laughs> wait, they can have Helix. Uh, I should probably attack first, right? Because they could have Helix. I mean, I guess whatever. If they have Helix, then I just attack them, right? It's the same thing either way. Doesn't matter. All right. Opponent, I promise I wasn't slow rolling. You could have Helix. <laughs> I wasn't slow rolling. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> we have to wait for them to stack their Lila triggers. Oh, man. Bruh. Any bras? Any bras? See ya. See ya. All right, what are we doing against Niv Mizet? Niv Mizet, huh? Pick your poison, good. Rocks! Could be good, too. Clothis. Praise Clothis. Rocks! What's bad against them? Torch is horrendous. Uh, I was going to cut the roast, but it does kill on math. Uh, I need to cut one card from my deck. Could be the hearse. They got greedy with the burst. Do you think they had the burst that turn? Or do you think they drew it? Both melee and volley kill on math too? Yeah, that's the thing. I'm not sure how many answers to Omnath we want to play. Like, that are rending volley, roast, red cap melee. We don't want to play a ton of them because drawing two sucks, and they don't even have, they don't usually play four on maths anyways, right? They play like two, maybe three tops. Yeah, it should be the current deckless drumming. Right, I know volley kills on math too, but what I'm saying is that I don't want to play a ton of cards where the only purpose of the card is to kill on math because what happens when you draw volley and they just don't draw on math and your card just doesn't do anything? That's the big issue. I think this is fine. All right, Gigantomy. Emotional support elk. Emotional damage. I think I keep this. It's a bit slow. This hand really needs to find a uh, citadel. What if we became finale of devastation gamers in this? As like a way to just pay you off for making a bunch of land drops off of Free Strider. Could finale for 10. Is that the goal? Maybe. Mr. Streamer, have you realized that the card Rending Volley deals 4 damage to Omnath as it is a legal target? No, I did not know that. Please tell me more. Tell me more, tell me more. Any followers? Anybody in the chat not following the stream want to do me a big favor? 
hit that follow button. Would greatly appreciate that. It doesn't cost you anything. You got no reason not to follow. You got no excuse. Mountain Watery Grave, huh? That mana does not cast any removal spells, so I will deploy Magda. I heard if you follow, it costs you a lot of money. That's not true. It doesn't. Co it costs you nothing to follow. There's no reason not to. What if I told you I would do a 24-hour stream if we get the 30k? How about that? Are you more likely to follow? Sorry, what? Is this card just Surgical Extraction? It is, right? Wait, what did they name? <laughs> I mean, in their defense, they didn't know how many of that card that I had. In their defense, they didn't know. Did they play four mana wraths? I'm not playing around four mana wraths. I'm just going to cast my cards. They don't have it. Standard hurt them. Yeah, that's true. They played against the team or analyst deck too much. Yeah, Unmoored Ego is just the surgical extraction of Pioneer. Just play four on your sideboard. It's fine. You'll figure it out. Oh, right. I cut two for game two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Hear, hear me out, okay? Do you think it's possible that them naming World Souls Rage off of Unmoored Ego means that we should be playing more than two copies? I'm trying to think of what I want to do here. I don't particularly want to double stomp this. So I think I won't. I think I'm going to do this, and then this, and then this. I name red. Oh, we're criming today, folks. We are criming today. Yeah, the believers are if the believers are in a good spot right now. But I'm going to be real with you. Believers are being chillin'. I want to see Analyst and Pioneer with Omnath have success so bad. Actually, now that you mention it, I forgot who it was. I think it was... I saw a list. Who was it? It was TJ, right? Let me find the deck list. Yes. TJ played this deck to a four or 48th place finish in a recent Pioneer Challenge. Analyst, Fey, Nissa, Omnath, Rage, Explosion, Deluge. I was going to play this at some point. I can, link, I, can put, I can put the link in chat if you want to take a look at it. What'd they do? Molten Collapse. Molten Collapse. Ah. So, one, two, three. Gas Tracker. We'll do this, and then we can kill the... We can kill the... Uh, not kill, but we can make a Magda thing. Magda token. I'll figure it out. Wait, did I also have enough mana to sack a clue? I don't think I did. I'll just let them trade for a tracker. I really don't even care that much. I'm sure I could have done this a little bit differently. You are going to say, have I seen this list? What's this one? This is... Oh, this is like the same exact list, huh? That deck looks sweet. I think we got there. I think we got there. The list kind of needs some Growth Spiral to have a chance against a deck like Bonner Red. Yeah, Growth Spiral would probably help out. I wonder if you you could also consider playing Kellen Inquisitive Prodigy as like another sort of growth spiral adjacent card. I think the standard decks have been playing Kellen as of late. Kellen's kind of cool. Test, 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 test. Mm, I'm not sure what we're testing. I make a treasure, please. I attack. I don't know how they're surviving. I will pass priority. We are cooking. We are cooking. Another analyst deck that won an RCQ. Pioneer? Ooh, undergrowth recon, huh? Uh, you're just dead. <laughs> I'm going to sacrifice my clue token. I guess they were dead anyways, if that's all they had. All right, cool. We did it. We Believers rejoice. Uh, so this was the list that we ended up on after a couple of iterations. I like a lot of what's going on. I don't, for the love of God, these Shrapnel Blasts, they were, the theory I think behind them was sound, but they were not good. Uh, except for that one game we won against Nip, of course. Just domed them for five. I think I would look to replace these with potentially a third World Souls Rage, and then you can also play like, uh, what's the the one mana? Flame Blessed Bolt. 
I think I might try Third Rage, one Flame Bless Bolt, because I do want these to be removal spells. Um, I was pretty impressed with Rage, but I think I do like this version a little bit better. Tracker is slower than Bill, because it's three mana versus two. But I think as far as landfall pairups are concerned, this one is so much better than Bill that you're willing to pay the extra mana for it. And as long as you have enough stuff to do in the early game, the extra three drop doesn't, it doesn't change, it doesn't matter that much, what should I say? Um, so yeah, this is probably where I would want to end up without the Shrapnel Blast again. Third Rage, one Flame Blast Bolt. The mana, I think, needs a little bit of work. Like, I'm not sure what the proper number of fields and faults should be. One thing I will mention that I, I didn't realize this at first, but fault giving you a treasure is really good, like, just turboing token with Magda. Because the general, like, the general play pattern with Magda is play it, activate Scrabbling Claws, make the first treasure, and then on the next turn, if you have fault, you just get to make a 4-4 immediately because you get the treasure off of the crime and then another treasure off of the fault. So keep that in mind. I think fault's pretty good. I, I don't know if you want to play four, though, because you are still down a land. Um, but fault's also good with the third World Souls Rage because you're putting lands in the graveyard. Uh, Rage also busted with tracker. So there's a lot of cool things that, that's going on here. So uh, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you thought down below. And YouTube, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.